studio. It's a pleasure to be in his studio. He has the most amazing paintings. That he moves everything out of his house and fills it with with his paintings. And um, and his studio is a pleasure to be in. And and you get you get to feel a real sense of his relationship with his friends and family and all of that. So I really enjoy right. this. Well, well, thank, thank you. you. Um, I got an email from Carol, who's here today, and she had saw some of my work and wanted, asked if I could paint a portrait of her, her brother, John, who couldn't make it today. And um, John, uh, or Carol told me that she's always had this difficult relationship with John because John's a real quiet, silent type, and uh, Carol needed someone to talk to, and he wasn't that person. So there was this little disconnect, and little did I know when she called me, I accepted it that this would be an emotional journey for us. And, and by us, I mean Carol and I, and not John. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so John, he, uh, you know, as I said, Carol was looking for, you know, this connection, these feelings, and these emotions, and that, and he just, he just, this just wasn't in his nature. So we went over to his house to take photos of him. I, when I, when I do portraits, I, I start with a, a photo shoot. Um, I don't do them live often because I can't get anyone to come to my house at 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we went there. He lived in Carpentry, and we went into his. Uh, his workshop, he's a woodcrafter, and because uh, that was where he's most comfortable, Carol and his wife had told me. So we went there to uh, take the photos of him, and I was just amazed because he is an artist in his own right. He has these giant boats that he built, he's uh, just crafted out of wood. And when I was there, I could see the whole process of the jigs that he made, and the, you know, in the different stages, and these beautiful lacquered finished uh, boats, and I, so I understood that, you know, John spent a lot of time alone working uh, on his crafts there. And, you know, being a, a craftsman, being an artist, being a writer, it's a, uh, it's, you know, it's a lonely occupation, because you're there by yourself. And it takes a lot of deep concentration to do that over many hours, and I realized that, you know, that, that's what John did, and, and I like that, and uh, John um, also, carry that quietness outside. So Carol felt that a portrait of him might help her uh, get back in contact with John. It might help her get through this. So, uh, so I, I you know, painted the portrait. I, I you know, did some sketches, showed it to her, and they approved that. Then I did that, and I told Carol it was ready. He was uh, ready to show. So she. Carol's right here, <laughs> and so uh, she, uh, I was looking up there for you, and so uh, uh, she has to send a picture so John can see, which is, which is great, because she sent a picture, because the worst thing in life is to do a portrait of someone and then have them come and look at it the first time, because you always know oh, they're going to just hate this, they're going to wonder why I'm hiring you. They're going to want their deposit back and more. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. But, but she said that they liked it. And so they came by and took a look at it. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and this is the result of John. And one thing that Carol told me, and I, I wrote it down, she said that uh, she hangs this in her, um, in her breakfast room. And so every morning, she gets to see John. And she said that the help, the painting has helped her through her karmic knot and to help to accept him as a steady, wordless presence that, that he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, so, and, and so that made me obviously feel really good <laughs> about the painting. Um, and, and one reason I went to speak to them and talk to John, I paint people, I, you know, I need to know who they are, and I got a good sense of who John was, you know, he, we went out to lunch afterwards with his wife, and her, his wife's just the opposite of John, she can talk, and uh, you know, John, John, John will talk when you sit and ask a question, but, uh, but he is like quite, a, so I was happy because it's, you know, when, when my goal when I paint a portrait is not just to create a likeness of someone, that, that's not that difficult to do, but to create who they are and, and uh, show who that, you know, they are in life is what, what my goal is as a painter. So, so this is John. I'm going to put John here. Be quiet. <laughs>
Now, uh, Helen. She is, is a local. Uh, she, she lives locally. Helen is a uh, is a local. <laughs> let me get the actress her right. She she is Ohio's living treasure. One of Ohio's living treasures. <laughs> Helen, uh, you know, years ago, we were getting into her, but it's all right, I, you know, people would tell me about her, and, you know, she worked 30 years volunteering for the Ohio Tennis Tournament, and she helped kids learn tennis, and she worked with the Ohio Youth Foundation for a while, and, and many years, and just, it was really a kind soul, and, uh, and, and, and what I just said is just a, scratches the surface of what she's done and how she's helped other people, so I kind of felt that I, I wanted to paint, uh, to paint Helen. Now another thing that you know it's always great fun to run into Helen because she always has a joke or has a story and none of which I can repeat. <laughs> and if you say anything to Helen that uh, might she might take the wrong way, she's not afraid to smack you. <laughs> and, and she'll probably do that today for saying that later. <laughs> but um. I wanted to, you know, I always try to keep, you know, challenge. I was painting stuff with dark backgrounds, and I wanted to paint Helen in a, in a higher key, which I did here. She was wearing a white uh, outfit, and, a, you know, she has her silvery gray hair, so I painted a really high key, and I thought that, that it gives a kind of ethereal quality, and it kind of matched, you know, who she is and her, her personality. Uh, and so I, I named this St. Helen of Ohio. <laughs> and so that's how it works. Now, Cassidy is another, another local person who, who uh, where's Cassidy? Yeah, uh, I've always been amazed with Cassidy. Cassidy, uh, I met her, I had my paintings at the Jester. Long ago, when the gesture was out. Yeah, you gotta turn it toward you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's Cassidy. And so I met her at, at there when I had my paintings there. She was a, a server at the time. She always amazed me because I had, you could see this energy inside of her, and you could tell that she, you know, had this quiet desperation and this. <laughs> intentional determination to, uh, you know, to uh, reach goals that she set for herself in her life. And uh, so, you know, over the years she has several jobs and, and so she's, uh, but, but today what, what is great about her, she's opened her own dance studio, she stopped all that, and so she's kind of living the, the, the dream that she uh, had always uh, hoped to have. And I, I just really, you know, that always moved me, that she had this drive and this determination. She did that, so I wanted to paint her as a strong, kind of determined uh, woman uh, that she is. And um, so that is Cassidy. Some of you may know her. Her uh, dance studio is called the Ojai Arts Exchange. And uh, anyone who wants to learn to dance should go see Cassidy. <laughs> uh, which, so I'm going to put Cassidy here now. now. Now, Cassidy has a boyfriend. And who is uh, who's her fiance now? And, uh, I, I I met Bernie separately, and this is Bernie. And I I used to paint Bernie. Now Bernie is a local musician, and he has a long history in the in the music uh, business. He's recorded with Grammy-winning artists, and uh, he's just a you know I met him. Watching him uh, play, and uh, and so I uh, asked asked to paint paint him. He uh, he was play he would play at the Vine, and Cassidy was working there as a server, and he apparently had a thing for Cassidy. And so the story is that he was at Home Depot and called her up one day and said, "Cassidy, I'm at Home Depot. I'm going to buy a piece of plywood. How big do you need to tap dance?" And so she told him, and he said, "Okay, you're 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 performing tonight." <laughs> and so he and she's an amazing tap dancer, and I I have this affinity. My son also has also tap dances, so I have affinity for uh, tap dancers and, and uh, tap dancing. 
Um, but I, uh, so, so this is Bernie. I, uh, you know, I, I, I did a, uh, well, what I did was, I, let me move hell in here. <laughs> oh, another thing about Bernie. So when Bernie and Cassidy came over to do the photo shoot, he, 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 my dad was awake and there, so I asked him to come and say hello to my dad. So he spoke to my dad and, uh, and they had a nice, nice chat, and then he called me the next day or a couple days later and texted me, I forgot, but he said he, he couldn't sleep because he, he's working on a new <coughs> CD, and he needed someone to do a voice uh, to introduce each song, and he thought my dad would be perfect for it. <laughs> and so, and my dad, he worked, he, he was a, you know, he worked in radio long ago, and so uh, I said yes, and I told my dad, and he said sure, so Bernie came over and recorded him, and Bernie's album, Downward Dud, came out, the CD, a couple months ago, and now my dad, at 97, has found a new career, <laughs> <laughs> and he's quite proud of that. <laughs> and you'll notice that I painted a... Downward Dud, I painted, this, so you put them side by side, the, Bernie is fondly looking up toward Ed Cassidy. Is uh, uh, they what? Is they what? If they're managing each other, they switch. Oh, please. <laughs> 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 um, okay, now uh, Ruben. I painted Ruben. Yeah, Ruben. This here. Yeah. Uh, gorgeous. Now, Ruben, uh, a lot of you know him. He's a, his family owned those Hopper Island restaurant here, and you know my family and I would go there. So I met him there. Years ago, but mainly, I got to know him well because he's a saxophone player, and I would see him, and um, and uh, I, I was always kind of intrigued with the saxophone. When I was young, I wanted to play a saxophone, but as soon as I looked at one, I realized it was way too complicated. <laughs> so, that I wound up the trumpet was also. <laughs> but, um, but Ruben, you know, he just has this great story. After his uh, family closed the restaurant, he became an animal. And I mean literally. He got hired by Eric Byrne and the animals. So he tours throughout the world with them. And in fact, this weekend he's performing at the Monterey Pop Festival. And I think Eric Byrne was one of the original people who perform there, and this is their 50th anniversary, and Ruben gets to go there. And Ruben is just such a nice, sweet, humble guy. He, you know, he's, a, he's just a, a great fellow. I had him come by and, to take a look at this, and, and, and one thing that, you know, when, I, when we shot Ruben, you know, he, a lot of people are a little uncomfortable, so, but I had him bring the saxophone, so we just told him to play the saxophone. So he just played for about half an hour to do that. Ever would shoot and I'd adjust the light and tell him to turn around. So we got a, a bunch of really great photos of him, and, and I, I, I chose this one because, for one reason, it was the only one that showed one hand, and uh, I didn't want to have to struggle doing two hands and <laughs> take the attention off Ruben's face. And another thing was, I, I, you know, I always try to get a new challenge, and painting a saxophone is definitely a challenge. Um, you want to paint uh, something that, uh, it, you know, it needed to be accurate because I know Ruben would look at it and he knows a saxophone so you can't just uh, mail it in or suggest it or anything. So I did it very detailed, but the, the challenge with that is to still let make it look uh, like you did it in 20 minutes, even though it maybe took 20 hours. And so uh, I did that and I was really happy when Ruben came and he, he pointed out all the little details. Goes, oh, I'm glad you got that. Not many people have those on their saxophone. And he commented on the rose gold there, so um, and so I was happy that uh, with that. And so anyway, this this is this is Reuben. Um, I'm gonna put Reuben over here and talk about the famous Buddy Wiles hey. here today. <laughs> now I met Buddy. I didn't even know it. He was uh, performing in South Pacific in Port Wainimi as uh, Emile de Beck, oh, right? Mm -hmm. and, and my son, the famous Ezra Ells, 
<laughs> who was also here. He was that was his uh, his uh, that was his uh, debut performance in the theater world. And so many years later, when I met Buddy, we kind of connected the dots and realized that that they had this connection. And so and, and Buddy's been great. He's uh, you know he, he he's been in the theater for all his life, I think. And my son's been in the theater, local theater, and Buddy kind of helped him and became a mentor to him. So I'll always be grateful for that. Now, as I said before, when some people come and pose, you know, there's a little discomfort sometimes if they're not sure, but not Buddy. Uh, <laughs> Buddy's a theater. I mean, Buddy would... Uh, uh, Buddy just stop at it. <laughs> so, he, uh, so, so, we, so we, we found a photo. We, I painted Buddy. I, he had this very intricate shirt that I didn't want to. Uh, if I did that and painted it as intricate as it was, it would have taken away from the focus. If you notice on a lot of my paintings that you know the face is the main thing on focus. The rest of it is just you know suggested or it's uh, blocked in, and I chose to to leave it that way. So the focus. It's either because I want the focus to go up there, or I've just had enough of it, and it's time to stop and, and move on. But uh, one thing about Buddy, you know Buddy, that he has this little quality about him, and his, you don't know whether he's smiling or smirking. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to capture uh, uh, that look in Buddy, so this is, this is, this is Buddy. And, uh, and, and now, this is one I finished recently. This is a Sammy Zaringer, and many of you may know Sammy. She's a local writer. And uh, she came, you know, a long time ago and, and, uh, and a, a post for me, and it took a while to, to get to do it. And she's this, this great witch. She's a great person to know when you talk to her. She just acts like you're the most important person in the world. <laughs> And she writes, and she is a, uh, I got, she, she has an official title that I thought I'd share with you. I want to make sure I get it right. That she is a, an award-winning breeder of domestic American long-haired children. <laughs> <laughs> and she also writes. About, uh, another challenge with her is that I, I paint with pretty aggressive strokes, or I, I did, you know, they changed throughout the years, but, and, and when you paint that way, it works better with men than women, because, and, and Sammy had this really soft skin, and I wanted to try to capture that, and at the same time, you know, maintain my, my style of painting. Um, and I asked her about the necklace that she had when she was there, and, and she said she never takes it off. So I realized I had to paint the necklace, <laughs> and so uh, because it was important to her. So I, I, one day I'll ask her what that, what, why that's important to her, and then I painted, you know, the earrings there, um, which was also. So I, I don't always do that. I'm trying to, you know, do that now. I'm, she had these really intricate earrings on, and I just said no. <laughs> and, and so, and it, but you know, we can do that. It, it, you, you've got to judge what's going to take away from um, the painting, you know. And, and, and these work well with uh, with Sammy. So that is um, Sammy. And um, for, oh, I've got plenty of time. Uh, one last painting is uh, uh, those who were here last uh, year may remember that I showed paintings of my two sons. I explained that I was a, I had trouble painting my daughter, and so uh, I finally finished my daughter. We we had gone through uh, you know some of the terms of family tragedies, and it was hard to paint her without showing that sore of it. And so uh, I was sorry to get a little most of So anyway, but I finally got to the point where. Uh, I could paint her as she could pose, and it kind of shows the turmoil in her background and her uh, moving forward. So, um, anyway, so those are the paintings. What I, what I, as I said in the beginning, what I hope to do is not just create a likeness, but try to create uh, something so you know that shows who they are as a person, shows their character, shows the little emotion, and that sort of thing. So, um, 
So that's it. I'll take questions or, or answers. I'm happy to get answers. <laughs> as well as questions. <laughs> yes. Oh, I really like the game. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What do you think of Galkin as a uh, to, to make Yeah, I use that too. That's good. Galkin as a medium. Yeah. Yeah, that helps. Uh, mm -hmm. That's another one that helps it dry yeah, really fast. So I think Galkin makes that. And yes. most, most of the ones you mentioned were uh, slow dry, the slow, like linseed oil, the slow the yeah. dry down. So do you like to keep the paint wet while you're working? Well, I just. With, with the galkin and the and the walnut alkyne, it the medium gets sticky too fast, mm -hmm. and so the paint doesn't flow. So I only I'll, I'll use that if I want to paint something and want to you know let it dry and go in the next day. But I just like the way the paint flows better using <coughs> pure, pure linseed oil or walnut oil. Walnut oil dries a lot slower than linseed oil does. But also on, on these metal surfaces, the aluminum. The paint dries a lot faster, mm. for, and I, I think, that, um, especially the canvas, because the canvas, the, the, uh, it'll kind of soak in the paint, and it just takes longer. I think the air, well, it's not really the air that dries paint, but I think it just creates a reaction that makes it dry quicker. Okay, yeah, yes? I noticed you used a lighter background for Sammy. Yes. That gorgeous, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Helen. Um, how do you choose, because I noticed uh, Cassidy and Bernie and, and your daughter are all pretty dark. Yeah, well Bernie's a dark person sometimes. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but you know, it's, it's, it's not like Bunny, I started with, this is kind of a little red background, but it was just fighting with it. So it, when we shot Sammy, it, it, there was a blue background behind her, and the nature of it, there's going to be a blue reflective light on her. So. You would have to change all of that to do that, to get it look realistic. Um, they were shot on darker backgrounds, and we were just, that's what we had. We didn't light it, but it just, you know, I, I don't know what causes why I do that, but I just, I'll, I'll change back and forth. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Just gorgeous. Thank you. All right, anything else? Yes. I'm a good friend of John, the first painting that you showed. Yes, you are. And uh, I think you really captured him. Excellent. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Oh, one more.